हरि ओम हरि ओम हरि ओम हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स It's New Year. I wish you all a happy New Year. <laughs> It's a day like any other day, but then the tradition made it into something special. A time when people look at their life and think. This and this maybe could be changed, could be improved. So then, let's give together a wish into this coming year. May the light become stronger and stronger and break through <laughs> and swipe away the darkness that is manifesting so strongly. <coughs> Let us all contribute. Let us all not get sucked into the gloominess, into depression. In spite of what is going on, bring your attention back to your own lightful nature here now. And then nothing can really affect you, and you are radiating something beautiful. If we do that, then we have already done our duty to contribute. That the present situation can change. Some may have to be active. Some may feel like to be active. Doing externally things about it, others may not. But if you are capable of staying in conscious connection with yourself, then you have already done your duty, your contribution. Your life will be much better. And you contributing that the external situation, which is Not nice, which is awful. <laughs> you contribute that it can change, and those who like, they can try to do even a step more. <clears throat> We can learn to transform energies in our body. If negative energy is there, we are in a space of negative energy. We can learn to absorb that and transform it into lightful, beautiful, creative energy. Then, how to do that? We can do that in different ways. If one Wants to do it more in a yogic style, then you just feel that negativity, feel it in your body, feel what it is doing in your belly. You feel that tension, and then you let the energy that creates that tension flow up in your body, right to the top of the head, and distribute it. In the body, and in course of the process, it's getting totally transformed. And you radiate that transformed, beautiful energy. If you want to do it more as a devotee, you just feel the negativity where you are, that you are confronting. You feel how it is affecting your body. 
and you just connect with God, with the divine. Feel that divine presence and give it over to the divine. Let it go. Just focus on that divine presence and relax. And that negativity gets transformed into something very beautiful. If you want to do it more as a jnani, jnana margi, again, you feel that attack of negativity. You feel what it is doing in your body. And you come back to your conscious presence. You can do so by asking, but who is experiencing it? And you bring it to the now, the attention. And there you become aware, okay, there is that negative attack, but there is that aspect that is not affected. You bring the attention into that. Look at the tension that the negativity is producing and relax. And it will dissolve. And then same energy that manifested as something negative, destructive, can be transformed into something beautiful. Usually I'm not talking too much about this <laughs> and I'm already imagining people on the Advaita way will ask, but what has all this to do with self-realization? <laughs> Actually, it has nothing directly to do with self-realization. It's an expression of the beauty, of the creativity, of the self. Nevertheless, if one learns to do this, if one does exercises like this, it helps very much to deal with the daily events in such a way that they are not disturbing all the time. Our conscious connection to with the self. So, the self is always realized. We don't have to do it. It is not a must that one does this kind of exercise. It simply, if we master this, the more, the better we master this, the better we can deal with daily situations, the unfavorable, unfavorable, situations in such a way that they are disturbing less and less and less until they are not more capable of pulling the attention away from the root, from the self, from God. All right. I'm open to questions. If anybody would like to come in, please come in. Not yet quite the case. Okay, just to come back from the subject I have been talking about, about transforming energy. If we can do that, really in this present situation, it's a great help. It's a great help for everyone who does, does it. It makes it much easier not to get caught in the negativity of it. And it's a great help for everybody else. It's 
the great help for the transition of the energy that is happening from a dark, restrictive, destructive energy into something lightful, expansive, creative, beautiful. But as I said in the beginning, if we are capable of not getting sucked into depression, into these negative moods because of what is going on, but learn to connect in spite of that, we have already done our job. We have already given our contribution that the transition can go smoother. <clears throat> if on top of that, one is capable of consciously transforming energy, that's really a blessing. A blessing for yourself, a blessing for everybody else. Let us pray and hope that this year, this coming year, is the year where really things basically, fundamentally, change. Out of this nightmare situation that something beautiful, creative can grow. The possibility is there. How long it will take, I don't know. But let us pray that it will happen this year. Okay, I'm asking again. Does anybody like to say something? Would anybody like to say something? You're welcome to come in. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, happy new year. <laughs> yeah. I would like to ask you. Uh, about what you are talking about what you are talking now. I think we are all could you hear me well? Uh, for a moment I didn't hear well, but now I hear you again. <laughs> yeah. I'm realist, realizing that we need the situation we are living in. Oh, it's again uh, the sound comes and goes. Okay. I'm going to change. Right now, I don't hear you at all. <laughs> okay. And now I hear you. Very nice. Well. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was wanting to ask you, uh, it is true that the situation we are living now is is very hard and it's affecting everybody in some yes. way, no? Yes. And in my case, I can feel that uh, since two, three weeks now, I start to to feel very angry. Mm. And I, as, as you were saying, I, I can feel that tension on my body, no? When, when I mm. do my my yoga practice, I, I can feel how much tense I am and how much I, it's, it's much more hard for me to focus also on my meditations, no? Yeah. And my question is uh, how to keep the balance according to the Bhagavad Gita, no? When Krishna says to, to Arjuna, you have to fight, no? You have to in that kind of situations that, that where there is a lot of injustice. Yes. I have been always very active, but for me in situations like that, uh, at the end, I end up being very angry. Mm. So <laughs> I feel that not doing anything, no? I think it's the time of doing something. I, I don't know, just to open eyes and, but for me, it's very difficult to keep that balance and not to get angry in that situation. Right. Could you say something about that? Yes, it's very, I mean, 
It's always like this, but in this particular situation, it's amazing how the emotions are flaring. <laughs> no matter what attitude, no matter what opinion somebody has, when people come together with different opinions, ooh, the emotions are flaring. <laughs> so, and that usually doesn't help something. Uh, you said that as, at least I should do something to open eyes, but if people don't want to open eyes, then they get angry if you try to do so. <laughs> yeah. Do that only if you feel really somebody is ready to listen to you. Don't try to impose it on people. If they don't want to listen to your eye opener, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> let the time bring it in the way that uh, they can accept it and understand it. So when you feel what is going on, when you feel the tension of it, then already there you said you're sometimes getting real angry about it. Then don't fight that anger. When you are by yourself and you feel that, then let that anger come sometime. <laughs> really feel angry about it. You have all the right to feel angry <laughs> about it. But then... <sighs> shift your attention to that experience of feeling angry and not more turning around and oh it's terrible what is happening it's terrible accept okay it, what is happening is happening but accepting doesn't mean that you should say it's good what is happening but the situation is still the, as it is whether we yeah. accept it or not but then when you really feel that anger you bring your attention to that experience of being angry and you stop feeding it by thinking about uh, what is not right in the world and it's totally not good, then that anger is dis disappearing and doesn't become destructive. In contrary, it can energize you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's better that you use that anger like this than going to people and get angry if they don't want to listen to you. If the situation comes and you feel somebody is open and has their doubts and then you can try to uh, tell whatever you feel like telling. If you feel an openness like this, as soon as you feel a block, then you just drop it. Because there's no point in trying to force anything. It doesn't help. It creates more uh, walls. It creates more uh, strong emotions that are not very helpful. It will come that people will have to see what's really happening. If they are already prepared, then it's easier for them. And those who are not prepared, they will be shocked out of their minds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, in some way also, I mean, I feel also scared now because it's like... Uh, um, until where we are going to arrive to to with this situation, no? And yeah. al also, as you say, thinking on people it should be very shocking, no? When they realize uh, yeah. what is what is really going on, no? And uh, how to support that people that 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 is going to being very shocked and. I don't know if, but should be very painful and very. I think so. For many, it will be very painful. But then if somebody is very fixed in their ideas, and then it needs sometimes strong measures that this can be shattered. And what is happening for humanity is really something like what is I said that before in another occasion, but like for uh, when you become a sadhak and you go on your spiritual way, there can be periods where it's very, very difficult. Yeah. And somehow this may be sometimes very painful, but when you stay with it and you come out of it, you become aware, okay, the pain was worth the trouble. Somehow uh, it has helped me to open up 
into a vaster space. And humanity as a whole is going through something like this. And we are so stubborn <laughs> in our fixations in holding on to the most part of the people. The, the only thing they think can think of is, oh, hopefully it's quickly over, then we can go back to our little pleasures. And this is the hope in vain. It's not going to happen that we return to the same thing that has happened before. And eventually this will be shockingly revealed. <laughs> and then uh, some may just open up and go with it. And some may have big difficulties with it. But you cannot change it. You can change that you are prepared <laughs> that as the situation develops, that you can make the best out of it. And being prepared and doing so, you can inspire others, but you cannot force anyone. If people hold on to their little limited views and desires, then sometimes pain is unavoidable. You cannot prevent them from going through that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to do the job for themselves. We can guide, we can inspire, we can support, we can do all kinds of things. But finally, it comes always to the decision of each one to make the next step and to make the next step. We can't do that for anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's curious because it is also happening to me that on the last days I'm realizing that as soon as I'm putting so much focus on the situation, I'm realizing that what I really need is to, to go to the opposite side. I, okay, now focus on the teachings. Now it's time to maybe hear much more te teachings, focus on your practice and forget about the situation and let it go. So maybe that's what you are mentioned, no? That... And focus on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Teachings can inspire you, but bring the attention to your consciousness, to your love, okay. to your energy in the okay. present. Feel <laughs> alive. Feel how you are conscious. Feel how your heart can open if you let it. Hear. Now, hold on to that. If, this, if the teachings help you, fine, wonderful. But the, not get lost in the teachings, not get lost in, <laughs> in the bad happenings. Yeah. Consciously, conscious, consciously alive now, as good as you can. That's the best you can do. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Werner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think I needed that that call. That okay. <laughs> Come back to the center. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you so much. Hario. 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 But I just said to Rebecca, it's nothing wrong the teachings, they are always reminded, but it's not, in a way, it's not that we have to expect that somehow the teachers or the teachings should do it for us. Take the teachings and take the inspiration from it, but where the solution is for our problems is now. Here, now, timeless. In that timelessness, there is no problem. The problems are in the mind, and the mind is in the current of time and space, in the past, in the present, in the future, in the whole story. And even when the story is difficult and seems hopeless, then we become aware of the timelessness of the now, then it's really, the whole thing becomes relative. Even big problems are not a big problem. <laughs>
<laughs> Even in very bad situations, don't become a problem because we become aware here now, timeless. There is something that is absolutely not affected by it. There is the source of happiness, the source of joy, the source of creativity and beauty, and we can let it flow out from here. We can use difficult situations to give us the necessary enthusiasm to detach from that level. We can use the teachings to give us the inspiration and the enthusiasm to look in the right direction. But where we finding the solution is not in videos, not in books, but here now in our own self. Or if the devotee doesn't like these words in their own self, here now in the divine presence. But never changing divine presence. We always have access to that. We always can connect with that. In fact, we are never disconnected to make except in our conscious attention that we disconnect and we can bring that conscious attention back and then even the worst situation we can confront becomes related and it's not more so important and not more so overpowering because there is something that is much more powerful than that. It's the source of power, it's the source of life, it's the source of love, it's the source of consciousness. <clears throat> okay. Is anybody else who would like to say something? You're welcome. Six people, nobody wants to talk. <laughs> uh -huh. The wind is coming again. I hope I've put. The microphone as good as I can in such a way that the wind comes from the backside. I hope it's not all the time making sounds now in the recording, in what you are hearing. <laughs> we are back to rainy weather. <laughs> That's been an amazing year about that how much it has rained. It's very, very unusual. I've never seen so much water in Tiruvannamal like, like this year, like <coughs> the last year. We are already in the new year. Is there anybody who would like to come? Please come. Okay. Then I talked with a friend. Do the same about the same subject, about the same situation that is happening in the world. And I said my piece, as I usually say, that I'm fully convinced that this will pass. There is a more 
lightful, a beautiful energy getting stronger and stronger, and this will change the whole situation. And he said, yes, of course, after the struggle, usually there is peace for some time. <laughs> it will not change anything, basically. And actually, a few years ago, I would have said the same thing. When people ask me, how can we improve the world? And I said, well, improve your experience. That's the best contribution you can make. But the world is as it is. Look back as long as you want. There were sometimes locally a period of harmony. It was there, it had a peak, it disappeared again. The whole human story is a story of struggle, of strife, a lot of wars, a lot of destruction, innovation and destruction. <laughs> and a few years ago, I also would have said, it's not bound to change. I used to say, okay, eventually, this world may evolve into a subtler, different condition and transform. And when that is happening, then there will be other places like this world that this kind of experience can still be experienced for those who need it, for those who want it. But when I said like this, I used to think this is, I mean, you know, far, far, far future that possibility is there, that eventually this whole level is evolving into a subtle space. I mean, that is the direction everything goes. <clears throat> and then, between three and four years ago, I was so surprised to feel that the energy starts to really change. And now I'm not more talking like my friend, or I would have told, talked a few years ago, but I say it's really a basic fundamental change going on. It may take some time until it's manifesting, but there is something very profoundly changing. And the old energy is holding on for dear life with the fingernails and tries to gain total control. Doesn't want to let go. And yet it's a full fight. <laughs> fight for them. For if this energy change keeps on going on in the same way, there's absolutely no chance that this control can hold on to. It has to go, it will break down and it has to completely let go. So there is indeed a fundamental change happening, not a fundamental, fundamental change of what the universe is, of what the whole manifestation is, but of the of this world, of this expression of divinity, of this level, and what kind of experience that can be had here. It's evolving. I never had imagined that this something like this would happen in the near future, but there it is, undeniable. Something powerfully, beautifully, expansive, energetic, is flowing on the, to this world and this earth as a being is changing. And so we who want to live, want to continue live in this world, we also have to change. Otherwise, we can't stay here anymore. And those who desperately are in the service of that old energy that is trying to control, they can't 
continue doing so. It's just not possible. For the time being, they have do what they can. It may even get worse for some time. Their intention is to is totally contracted to, 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 to make this experience in something extremely small. And it's not going to happen. <laughs> the experience will become bigger and expansive. And then that energy simply cannot more be in control, cannot more hold on. It has to totally surrender and give up. Until then, we just have to have the courage not to get overwhelmed. Let's see, I need to connect Karen for the computer. Ah, great. Karen is coming. <laughs> <coughs> Until this starts to manifest, we can contribute to make it smoother by doing what I said in the beginning and all along in this satsang. And externally, we just to somehow have to find our way to get through the whole story. I really don't know how long it takes honestly, and I pray that it will go quickly, smoothly, as painlessly as possible. <laughs> Again, I'm asking, is there anybody who would like to talk? You're welcome to come in. You don't have to continue on the same subject. <laughs> You're welcome to talk something different. <laughs> Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Hello. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to go on this subject about anger that you talked about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going on watching my emotions and reactions and uh, yeah, I see they are strong and I often feel ashamed that I uh, have so small reasons for such big emotions. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, uh, it's really, it's funny and I feel impressed about it. And uh, last time you talk about innocence and about children and uh, about the uh, pure pureness and all this uh, and that we should uh, respect them for this for their innocence yeah yes yes and I see uh, I talked to you about the cat that uh, lives <laughs> lives near us and he is uh, I, I, as I see, he's pure and innocent, but I feel angry with him and irritation. I, I often feel some irritation and I, I even don't understand logically why I feel it because <laughs> he's just a cat and uh, he's, he doesn't plan to, <laughs> to do something awful. <laughs> <laughs> and he even doesn't do something awful, but I don't know. Um, I I can't uh, can't ex explain to myself this feeling because when I was ch a child, I loved uh, animals very much, and I liked to play with them, all these dogs and kittens, and yeah. But now when <laughs> oh yeah when this cat demands for food or demands something else, I feel irritation. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know how to express it. I, I know I didn't uh, plan to get a cat, but it happened that he came. Yeah. 
And sí. now I, I feel irritation that uh, why it should be my duty to feed him. I don't, I, <laughs> I didn't, uh, I wasn't going to, to have him. I, I understand it's too funny. Yeah. But I feel these emotions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You said there is, there is no logical reason for it. Well, emotions have usually not much to do with logic. <laughs> 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 they, they come and if we look logically at the situation, it is often questionable why this emotion should come. Obviously, it has not so much to do with the cat. It's just uh, an emotion that somehow you are being given the opportunity to get uh, better in control of that emotion. And mm -hmm. so it, it can happen, it can hook to any situation. Uh, it yeah, can be yeah, yeah. A, a simple situation like a cat getting on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand this. This is not a, because of the cat yet. Yeah, yeah. In my, in my myself yeah right when you become aware as long as you're just reacting and you're not becoming aware what's going on you cannot do anything <laughs> but mm. once you become aware in the situation oh, oh there i'm going again to completely out of proportion emotionally reacting to a situation then uh, don't as the first step, immediately start to fight that emotion, but okay, let that emotion be there. Accept, okay, the emotion has come again, the reaction has come, and deal with it as we have been to talking about it uh, in our, at other times. You withdraw the attention from what brought the o emotion about you leave the cat be cat or the situation be situation and <laughs> you just bring the attention to your experience right now okay here i'm irritated how does this really function how does this really manifest and observe the process of it observe how it is manifesting in the body and learn to relax the whole thing and then it has been actually a very valuable experience. It's not wasted. Uh, and uh, in course of the process, you may completely forget what brought out, <laughs> what brought about the irritation. Or even if you don't forget, it will not more be important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. I, I try to come back to myself, to my breath. Yes, but this emotion's so strong. Yeah, I see it takes uh, enough time. Yeah, <laughs> I. It's also when the mind starts to become quieter, the emotions come faster and stronger. As long as the mind is full of stuff all the time, then the, the emotions slowly come and build up, but. Uh, <clears throat> There is so much other mental stuff going on that they uh, they have to somehow like find their way through all that mess. But once you become quieter, then when an emotion comes, it may come boom in a moment, <laughs> strong, and you think, "My God, <laughs> yeah. I'm getting I'm getting worse and worse with my reactions." Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> For nothing, but uh, this is. This is normal, that uh, this feeling is there. It's not that you're getting worse and worse. It's simply when there is not so much cluttering in the mental space, then when an emotion comes, it comes fast. It comes strong. So don't worry about it and don't think it's totally wrong and I'm ashamed, but just learn. <laughs> To see it. Hello. <laughs> After all, he's a cute one. <laughs> yeah, yes, he's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you bring the attention to the present and 
let the emotion be there and just be with the experience. And then uh, somehow the experience, instead of wasting your energy or, the, or wasting your time, then your experience can be empowering. Then you can use it and can do something creative with it, constructive. <laughs> Oh, yes, okay, Verna. <laughs> I try to do it. Yeah, I try to uh, unstuck from these uh, thoughts, from this. Um, yes. Right. Don't waste your time uh, feeling guilty and ashamed and reprimanding you. If the emotions come, okay, as long as you are not quite aware what's going on, okay, then you have to, to wait until you become aware. But once you are aware, at that moment, you remember, hey, every situation is a, is a challenge. It's a possibility to unfold in our experience. And so we can use the weirdest situations and the weirdest reactions that we are having for just that, instead of wasting our time and, oh, it shouldn't happen and it, it's so bad of me. And then it's also losing the power, the emotion. Hmm. Yes, I see Werner. Thank you very much for your help. Yes, it supported, helps so much to come out from these small, small difficulties which I stick in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hari -oh. Hari -oh. Hari -oh. Hari -oh. Hello, Anna. Ah, hello, Anita. It seems yes, to be hello. cool where you are. Huh? <laughs> a little bit, but not, bit. not hello. It's windy, not too cool. I, uh, I saw a hand and a few hairs, but yes, not the face. Yeah, the, my friend Shanti. <laughs> hello, my friend hello. Shanti is here. <laughs> it's so great to listen to you, Doctor. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Both of you. <laughs> um, I had a different question, but now after many talks, I think I have even um, better one, also more deeper one, because uh, uh, about emotions. For me, the issue is that I, I, I cannot come in contact with my emotions. Yeah. Uh, but I project it outside. I meet people and especially partners yeah. uh, who are sometimes very emotional and I can't stand it. Uh, but that's all. There's only this rejection. And uh, I think that I seems like I have a lot of emotions stored due to my upbringing. And... Uh, yeah, and I, I, I meet them in the outside and I reject them, but I don't cannot I cannot come in contact with my emotions. And I believe that I don't know, it's maybe good to because if if I don't do that and release it, it will always um, I will always encounter it in the outside. Right, but you don't have to go and dig dig in the dirt. <laughs> I, I cannot anyway i cannot but but what is happening i'm 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 uh, yeah encountering this uh relationships where it's it's coming there in the outside and, mm. and then i break it I, I say okay that's enough i cannot i don't want that kind of energy but i don't know if it's that i i have to somehow let it out, but I don't know how. And do I need to let it out? It's, it's not that you have to uh, somehow let it out and express every emotion that comes. Sometimes it's good to let it out, to let a bit steam out, but not. it's better not in a destructive way. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's more a question of becoming aware and you thought you have stored a lot of emotions. That's a, a way of talking about many, it, it's quite in 
It's quite modern to talk like this, that you have stored all these emotions in your cells, in your body. And it's not really that you have stored emotions, it's just a habit of getting emotional quickly about certain things. I'm, I'm using now the umbrella to hold the wind a bit away because it's quite stormy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any a lot of disturbing sounds because no, of the wind? No, no? no it's very good. Ah, sound. Very good. Mm. Okay. <laughs> because there is a bit of storm coming right now, but you in momentary they come and go quickly. So I hope it won't do any harm. <laughs> <laughs> then and you let the emotions come. I mean, if they would create unnecessary pain, then it's better that for the moment you can control them. But then you had a doubt whether you, you said then in certain situation, you said, say to people, I don't need this. And then you don't want to continue that situation and you have the right to do so. It's not that you have to think, no, no, I have to stick now out anything that comes along <laughs> in order to deal with my emotions <laughs> but you don't have to look for emotions stick for emotions just be here now in peace as good as you can and then with those who come up all by themselves you learn to deal with it with them in such a way that they cannot always create unnecessary pain neither for you nor for others <laughs> But my emotions are up to now only the, my react, also my no, not reaction, my my not wanting the emotion from the other. That's my only emotion. There's no, there's nothing else than this reaction feeling. And then I might get angry, but not really. Mostly, I just, I just say I get, I don't want to talk like this. Yeah, right. Well. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much you should bear and how much you should not bear. <laughs> it's not I think that, that I, I, I'm looking for the fault in myself. I think it's me who attracts this. I think it's me who has to learn something because this is happening. Yeah, there maybe, must be a reason. Maybe it's not the fault, but yes. Maybe there is a reason that this is happening more frequently in your life. And then instead of trying to figure out some exotic reason for it, <laughs> you, you just accept, okay, then so it's on the program that I'm confronting this kind of situations and learn to use them in such a way that they that they can learn to do something constructive with them, that they become a help to become more expensive instead of uh, contracting consciousness. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe there's another reason. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a very... The other issue is that I, I'm very much focused on the outside. And... and uh, how is the other feeling and then mm -hmm. I'm not so centered in myself, I guess. Right, but the two, the two are not at all exclusive. It's not that you should become insensitive about others. It's, it's good to have that empathy. But you should also not to be too much concerned. Uh, about emotional reactions of people, it's enough if you are not going around hurting unnecessarily. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Right. Sometimes some unpleasant emotions cannot be avoided because if we are dealing with people, then very quickly people have all kinds of expectations. And if we don't fulfill them, then they feel hurt. And that is not the hurt that you are creating. That's something they are doing to themselves. We can just be careful not to unnecessarily create more 
heard that that the uh, we could easily avoid. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> Mario, 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 Mario. Mario. Hello, Werner. Ah, oh, hello, Leora. I have a new computer. Great. I hope, I hope you can hear. Picture is good. I can hear you, and yeah, the picture I hope you is can good. Hear me okay. Yeah. I hope you can hear me okay. Yes, I can hear you okay. Um, um, I have a question about what you said before about um, um, how is it called? The divine is not changeable. Hmm. Um, as in refer to what we have learned in the Theravada for all these years about Anicca, which is one of the three truths about reality. That everything is changing all the time. And that this is actually a way to comfort myself when there is a difficult situation, then I know, okay, it's not going to stay like that. Because reality, the real life, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but everything changes. But then also you talk, you mentioned this, divine which is maybe not the real life <laughs> how do they interact together <laughs> so <laughs> you think this is the, the real life so the other is not the real <laughs> no, I, no no i don't know i really don't know but but i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure i've heard it before but this time it struck me like Okay, so everything what, is changing, then what about the divine huh? that is not changing? <laughs> well, um, yeah, the yeah, divine right. is a name, and for somebody who feels who is naturally from the temperament more a devotee, it's easier to think of the divine and to think of God as, as the essence mm -hmm. that is there the unchangeable essence against which all these changes are noticed. But you can also just say it's your own, the source of your own consciousness, that which is prior to all these things that change all the time, that which makes the experience possible. And, I mean, words are words. And in yeah. relation to all the continuous changes, that is the base that is not changing. But even that statement, of course, has not an absolute value because even that base is somehow getting enriched through the whole process of the experience. But essentially, mm -hmm. it still doesn't change. And we can use very well that for our experience the contrast between everything is changing all the time but there is that essence that makes the experience possible that is changeless that remains that essential unaffected something <laughs> yeah so if i translate this into my everyday practice I can just now when you were talking, I thought when I just stand, when I stand and breathe. Yeah. And just just um, imagine the energy or not even imagine, feel, imagine. Yeah. The energy going through the depth of the, of the earth, through this body and up, away. To the sides whatever and i just i me this body these legs just stand and stay there and like feel the stability physical stability 
Good. Of being as one of the practices that I can do, just like stay, 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 stay right. where you are. Right. Uh, but this is, of course, not the changeless I'm talking about, because also I that know. is changes, changing all the time, and also the energy you feel is great as a as a practice, as an experience. The energy is already the expression of that which makes the experience possible. There's nothing that you can really say about it. When I say the divine presence, mm -hmm. then I'm talking about that, which is even prior to that, and of which the energy, the life, the, the consciousness, the love are the first basic expressions. And yeah. we can- I feel that, yeah. We can connect Sorry. with that unspeakable by being aware of that first expression, be it energy or love or consciousness. That's so perfectly valid with the exercise you said. But the, it's not that which I mean with the unchangeable. So you don't have to have a confusion about that because of the, I use the, the, that which is not changing for Everything I can think of does change all the time. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that some, some place in this being in me understands what you're saying. Then I'm trying to understand it intellectually or the language or the way I'm used to, to live my life. And then yeah, then I get confused, but somehow I feel, I mean, not bad. At the same time, I feel that I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah, but still, I feel I remain confused. <laughs> right, and um, the mind will if always... there's something I want to try, I want to, to reach it, I want to have it, I want to... Yeah. to I understand it and yeah you yeah right and the mind will always be confused about this whole story that is going on and be exactly because of this understanding is very helpful up to a point to give us the pointer in the right direction but then we really want to understand the essence of it and it's just simply not possible of course, you know what I'm talking about because you are what I'm talking about, <laughs> deep down. <laughs> All are, yeah. Right. But then, out of habit, we always somehow try to get that feeling of security by understanding a situation because then it gives us the feeling we are on top of the situation. Somehow, uh, it's clear, it's under control, there is no <laughs> bad surprise there. <laughs> and, and of course, on material levels, that may also apply many times, but it's simply not possible. Whatever I'm talking, it's not that finally, then you understand it fully, the way you understand any external situation. You cannot mm. understand. I cannot understand. Nobody can understand. Uh, so mm. uh, just accept that the, the intellect helps you at a certain point, reach a certain point, give the right direction. And from there, they just don't even try to really understand. <laughs> Simply open the heart to it. Yeah. And there you know, you don't understand. There you know, you are that. Yeah. You know that by being that, not by understanding that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Thank you. You are welcome. Hario. 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 Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Please come in. The wind has reduced a little, hopefully. Also without the wind chill, <laughs> it should work again. Is there anybody who would like to talk? What we just talk now with Leora, that's, that's something everyone on the way sometimes just hits the head against the wall. <laughs> because the temptation is always there out of habit that we really want to get it, that we want to grasp it that we want to really get the point. I mean, it's, it's in our society, the way one goes about it. Mathematicians try to create bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger mathematical equations, trying to explain existence, <laughs> trying to explain what exactly happened in the first salient <laughs> part of a second of the Big Bang and create all these mathematical calculations by trying to understand what the whole story is, what life is. It's so simple in a way, what is happening and that simplicity is beyond the intellect. It's difficult for the mind to accept that we have to use the mind to get an understanding, to look in the right direction, to get an understanding about many things that prevent us from being in our natural state, get an understanding how much we have been misled that we learn to focus our attention, not on the essence, but on so many other things. All these understandings, they are very valuable and necessary and yet to understand that we cannot understand a sense of it, what is really going on, it is very difficult for the mind to accept. And yet, somehow, we don't get around it. Up to a certain point, we can, through clear discrimination, through clear thinking, we can remove the things that disturb as it traditionally in India, they rather talk like we discriminate, discriminate between the read and the unread. Uh, but I would rather say, just see and understand the mechanisms that prevent us from being in our natural state. That understanding, that seeing, that mental mechanism that helps us to discover that is very helpful, it's necessary. But then the desire to try to really grasp the essence. And sometimes I use the word divinity or God, and then I mean that unnameable essence. We can call it God, we can call it the self. No word 
is adequate. We can call it Brahma or Bra Para Brahma. <laughs> The beyond, the beyond, the beyond of the beyond. <laughs> can call it emptiness or fullness. Whatever word we are using, no word is adequate to in any way to practice. In any way explain this mystery of existence. And yet we try. The mind cannot let it go. We try and try and try. <laughs> and when we see that mental struggle, then it's better to say, okay, I kept it. I surrender. I give up. And keep quiet. And open. And in that quietness, in that openness, something else can happen to then understand it. <laughs> we have some more time. Is there anybody who would like to talk? You're welcome to come in. Hello, Bernard. Hello, I hear a voice. Yes, this is Rebecca again. Ah, I don't see you, Rebecca. <laughs> now the the connection is not ah now i see you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i want i want to, i want to come back to the conversation you have with anita mm -hmm. because uh, you say, at the end you say something that happens a lot to me and it's about expectations no when I have the problem that when people have expect expectations from me, yeah. uh, for me, it's always very difficult to, um, to do something like, uh, something different from their expectations. So when I have yeah. to, to, to take decisions that are, that are according to me, to my, to my life, if, if they are going to confront expectations from all, uh, I feel very guilty, mm. so it takes me a lot of energy and a lot of time to to make decisions. Just be the the feeling that maybe some people is going to be, uh, I don't know the word in English. Unhappy now. with you. The yeah. people are unhappy with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Right. Be true to yourself. Of course, it's nice if we can fulfill the ideas of people and be in harmony with them. It's nice if you know that uh, this person is much happier if I do this than if I do that. If we can do so, as long as you feel it's right that I'm doing that, as long as you feel it's right, that I'm fulfilling that expectations. But if you feel, no, no, it's totally against my grain. It's, it's not right. I'm simply doing it to keep the peace. Then sometimes it's totally justified not to fulfill expectations. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it was frozen because I think the connection was not so good, but yeah, now I can I hear you. But I was for yeah. a moment really kicked out of the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have to make it big again because we are all small now. So now I see you big again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you know till when you heard me? <laughs> Uh, since the beginning was, I mean, I could I couldn't hear you properly because it was cutting all the time. But, I see. So yeah. yeah. Anyhow, you don't have to fulfill expectations 
if you are aware, it's going totally against your grain, against what you feel is right. And then you take it in your stride that sometimes you do something of which you know the other person or the other people around, they are not happy with it, but you are at peace with yourself mm -hmm. to do that. And if out of old habit and feelings come like guilt, then you just look at that guilt, you smile about that, and you don't take it serious. <laughs> okay. It's nice if we can do things the way that people are not offended, but if they have selfish uh, expectations, and you know, if I'm fulfilling them, I'm. It's not right. Something disturbs me because I know it. I, I feel not good about it. I simply do it in order to keep the peace. And then it's mm -hmm. much better that you keep the peace with yourself than the external peace. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not that we have to go around and provoke everybody all the time, <laughs> but, <No. laughs> but we don't have to do the opposite also, to just uh, agree, 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 even if we feel it's not right to do so. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking more about uh, maybe about, no, for example, since on the last six, two years, for example, no, I, I came back from India. Yeah. And still, for example, my, my desire is to come back as soon as is possible in in different way, no, different conditions. And so, yeah. on one hand, luckily I had the chance to start to teach yoga yeah. here, and now I have more students. Uh, I'm doing very nice groups. So I mean, I'm building something very nice also here. But still, my desire, is, I think, is not to get stuck here no I, I want to move so but I can start the, the feel now that some students start to to, to have expectations from me mm. and so I start it has always happened to me in, in, in different situations no so I'm going to deceive them just because I'm going to do something maybe at some point I'm going to break again mm. and I'm going out so that kind of I'm talking about that kind of decisions no no yeah, yeah right and it's, there you do that which you feel is right for you and if you have the opportunity and you feel it's right for you to go somewhere to go to India or to go somewhere then you do yeah. so and you tell your student okay I taught you now but now for some <laughs> time you can continue by yourself what you have learned <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's not that we have to hang on to a yoga teacher as a yoga student on and on and on and on yeah once you have taught the basics then mm. the student who is attentive can also do it all by themselves and for sometimes it may be even good for them not to have yeah. always mama there looking over them. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But it's something that has happened to me always. I mean, before that, I was a school teacher for 20 years. And yeah. so when I took the decision, on, that's not for me anymore. Yeah. It took. It also took me a lot of time not to, to confront to my colleagues, no, because all because of that, because of expectations, no. So. Uh, at that point, I decided to change, to do this, to change my my way of life, to change everything. No, so I knew at that moment that that was going to be very conflicting. So to many people, also my family, some friends. No, so every time that I have to 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 confront that kind of situation, that my desires are not <laughs> what the majority of the people is what they expect of me or what is considered like normal no it, it, it for me it takes time that uh, at the end I go ahead but it it takes me time always because because of that because that expectations 
are so heavy on me, no? It's like, yeah. You know why, why it is so heavy, why it is so difficult? Because we also have an expectations of a positive feedback from them. And yeah. if we go our way, then in for the moment we may get the negative feedback. But actually, if you are sure about your way and you go with then people very quickly will again accept it and adjust to it. And those who are not capable, then never mind if you leave them behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somehow or other, we have to learn to develop that strength to do that which is right, to which we feel is right, to go our way without caring whether people like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, As I, I said know, before, but... we don't have to be unnecessarily provocative and uh, and do things that uh, is uh, shocking people if we can do it in a nice and harmonious way. But still, what is important is that you are at peace with yourself and that you are, if you live your life the way you find it's right. Mm -hmm. And do in the situations, take the possibilities that are opening the way you feel it's right to do so and not what people expect from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank All you, right. Werner. Let's leave it at that. that. <laughs> Hario, Mario. Hario. If there is somebody who would like to talk right now, you can come in. Seems not to be the case. There was some action there, but then, okay. I think then we stop the official satsang with that for today. Are you? Are you? Are you? Yeah.